okay, I don't know if this is ever going to make the internet. Hey guys, I just wanted to give you the heads up. This video was originally just going to be one video, um, but I've had to split it into two. So you will get the second part in a few days. Uh, it came out to an hour long and I just was not gonna put anybody through that, but I think there's just so much to talk about, so many things that I think are important. Um, so it is a two-parter. I hope you guys enjoy part one and part two coming soon. I never thought in my damn life I would have so much to say about kitchen appliances, yet here we are. Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Um, this is a long-awaited video and to be honest, shopping for appliances that are accessible to me as a blind person in 2022 was so much harder than I anticipated. A few weeks earlier. I just... Sometimes, like, I film things because it's like my way of journaling. Sometimes I film things when I'm emotional and I don't ever plan to post it. I just keep it because it's like my way of getting things out the way other people might journal. And um, it's just what I'm comfortable with. So I don't know if this will ever make the internet, but I'm filming it because I'm just emotional and I'm frustrated and I don't know what I hope to get out of this um, if I do post it. I guess maybe like some people will feel seen or heard. Maybe some people can relate to some of the things that I'm experiencing or feeling. Maybe we can just educate people in society about struggles, like the real struggles that disabled people face sometimes because people just genuinely don't know about it, which is like why I do this, you know? Because I want people to understand because if people don't know about it, then they can't make change. If people don't understand the struggles, then nobody's ever gonna be able to help us overcome them. And some struggles, we can't overcome ourselves. Sometimes we need big corporations or people with higher power or deeper pockets to be able to help make that change for us. I'm just frustrated. I knew going into renovating, like frustrations were gonna happen and I'm sure there's more to come, but this is the first one that's like really irritating me. Like everything is touchscreen. Like so many modern appliances are touchscreen and he said like this is the reality is like the modern stuff is just really moving away from knobs and buttons and it's all becoming touchscreen. It's frustrating and I'm not just frustrated for myself. Like I'm frustrated for everybody in this community that like technology has the power to make our life easier or harder. And when companies just take a little extra time to think about us and include us, it makes our lives easier. But when they forget about us, it makes it harder. Like touch screens, sure, it's fancy and it's fun for people. But like the, if we're not gonna bother making the apps accessible, then like just give me my buttons back. The fact that like so many things that are accessible in life, like even braille displays and stuff, they're so expensive. And with the unemployment in the blind community, like, how are people expected to? I'm just frustrated for people. Like, how are blind people supposed to reach their full potential when they can't even get access to things that could help them? Like, it's just so frustrating. And I recognize I'm so fortunate to be able to like have a job that I like love and that helps me pay my bills and that has empowered me at a young age to buy a home that I can even dream to make accessible. But it's like, why, why does all the most accessible stuff have to be so expensive? And it's like the people who would benefit from a fully smart kitchen the most are disabled people and yet we're this so many people in our community are unemployed or financially struggling and it's just like so frustrating and so discouraging and like I said yeah I'm frustrated for myself but like I'm frustrated for everyone because it's moments like this when it's just like it's not fair life's just gonna get harder than it already is I wanted to build this space, not only for myself, but to show 
people that you can build a space that's both beautiful and accessible. And it's like, I can't even make the kitchen fully accessible. I can't even achieve my own goal. Neely makes this amazing washer and dryer for blind people and they only sell it in certain European countries. So I can't get that. So I'm just feeling like frustrated and discouraged and like concerned for the future, for this community. And I know that like, again, like we've come so far and there's been so much progress. But as I said, with technology, it's like, it's either improves our lives or harms it, depending on what the company chooses to do. And I just wish like more companies thought about us. I wish accessible things were more globally available, like the Mealy, I wish that accessible things were more, at a more accessible price point so that the people who can truly benefit from it can actually obtain it. I don't know, it's just something I felt like was important um, to get off my chest and maybe one day it'll make the internet and um, I don't know if you, I don't know, that's, that, that's it. And I found that the lack of resources and information and help out there to be astonishing. Like this has been a feat to navigate this space as a blind person. And um, to be honest, I wasn't expecting that. I, I, I guess I was naive in thinking that it would be much easier to find accessible appliances than it has been. And therefore due to just a lot of life circumstances like retiring Gallup and getting my new guide dog and settling in with him and all of these other things that I had committed to in my life, um, I kind of put off appliance shopping longer than I should have, which condo update has caused a bit of a delay as to when I will be able to move in. Um, so it's looking right now like I'll be moving in closer to the end of May. And to be honest, I have been working very hard over these last six, eight, ten months to try my best to not stress about things that I cannot control. And so I'm just like letting it go. And um, I feel like I'm doing a really good job at like, not stressing about it and just being like, the place will be done when it's done. I'll move in when I move in and I will love it. And that's that. So um, it's not a huge deal. Um, and you know, I knew going into renovating during a pandemic that there's delays on many fronts, um, whether it be like warehouse delays, um, supply chain issues, things like that. So uh, it's not a surprise to me. And that's that. Now, when it comes to appliance shopping, um, as a blind person, I learned that there are like 10 times more things that I have to think about than an able-bodied person does. Able-bodied people have to think about the dimensions. Does the dimensions fit the design or the space? Uh, they have to think about the aesthetics. Does it aesthetically suit the look that I'm going for? They have to think about the budget. But beyond that, there isn't that much more they need to think about. You know, they might have to think about like, do they want French doors or a single door? Like things like that. I, as a blind person, have to think about all of those things and quite literally, can I use it? Is it accessible to me? Um, can I use it independently? And I know a lot of you watching this who have followed me for a long time are like, Molly, you don't even cook. Why were you so concerned? There's a number of reasons. Um, number one being, no, I don't like cook full gourmet meals, but I still do. I still do things in the kitchen. I do still use a lot of the appliances myself. Number two, the more accessible they are to me and the easier they are for me to use, the more likely I am to get excited and want to develop my skills in the kitchen further. Number three, um, because I am not just gonna buy something that's completely inaccessible to me and accept that that's the market. Um, I have a platform and I have the ability to share my voice to help make a minute level of change. And so I wanted to put my efforts into researching and seeing what was out there to be able to speak to this. Um, and I also know that there's a lot of blind people who follow me who might be renovating a home in the future, who have previously renovated a home and struggled, who are in a rental unit. And in three years when, you know, their old school oven conks out and their landlord is replacing it, like they need this information. Um, and so I wanted to make sure that not just for me, but to be able to share it with others, I was doing a thorough job at figuring out what the options on the market are.
I have tons of categories to cover, a lot of information. Uh, I am going to be sharing not only about um, accessibility for blind people, but a little bit of information around accessibility um, for people in wheelchairs or with mobility issues. That said, I am not an expert at any of this. None of this is my expertise, but especially outside of blindness. Um, and so I'm just sharing some information that I found during my digging and research. Uh, and I am going to try my best to link some info in description box below as well. Um, that said, if you are disabled, any kind of disability, I want to make the comment section a helpful resource as well. So I'm going to pin a comment and please share what you have found, what disability you have if you're comfortable and share what appliances are most accessible to you, what you would recommend for people who are in a wheelchair or who have autism or XYZ, whatever disability it might be, please share what you have found to be the most accessible to you or challenges that you found with appliances um, because I want this to be a resource for people and I want to have you know helpful conversations and I also ask that you share this video share this video with other blind people share this video with other disabled people share this video with people who work in technology in app creation share this with people who work in the smart home space share this with people who work in appliances whether it be on the sales level as a as a salesman or woman at a you know a showroom or whether it be in the you know back end designing share this with people because we need to raise awareness for the challenges that exist because when we don't talk about the challenges we can't talk about solutions so um that is my request of all of you and i really appreciate it and i also before i jump into the meat and potatoes of this video yeah <laughs> meat and potatoes get it because we're talking about like appliances and cooking where you'd like you'd use the appliances to cook the meat and the potatoes Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, so before we get into the meat potatoes of this appliance shopping video and all the things I found, I would like to thank the sponsor of today's video. Couldn't be more perfect. Hello Fresh, the queen herself. Uh, of course, in the kitchen with these new appliances, a lot of cooking is going to be happening. Whether it's me or whether it's somebody else, lots of cooking will be done with these new appliances that I've finally, finally, finally purchased after months of research. And uh, I will be cooking, or somebody will be, a lot of delicious HelloFresh meals. In case you don't know, HelloFresh is a meal kit delivery service. They deliver meals in all different categories, whether it be vegetarian, reduced carb, family friendly. There's tons of different options. Delicious food, oh God. This time we had such good ones. There was these meatballs that were literally mind blowing. The texture, the flavor, so freaking good. Would highly recommend. It's so nice and easy because you get lots of variety in your food. You get the um, like cards that have the recipes on it. And so what we've started to do is make our own little like HelloFresh um, cookbook where we just keep all of the recipes that we liked the most and then we always have them. They also deliver like all the ingredients you need and just the right amounts. So you're not buying groceries and having things go to waste or rot in your fridge, which is ideal. Like that's the goal. We don't want to waste food. We don't want food rot. So absolutely would highly recommend. And using code mollyburke 16 at checkout gets you 16 free meals and three free gifts. So definitely check that out. Link below and thank you so much to HelloFresh for sponsoring me once again. Okay, so where to begin? There's truly so much to cover. I have a lot of different categories and things I want to talk about and stuff to cover. So for ease, in the description box, I will have all of the time codes with the different headings of information. So if you don't want to hear about any of this other stuff that I have to talk about and you just want to hear your options, the time code is down below and you can click to that section. I think it's important to talk about what steps I took. Like, where did I do my research? What have I looked into? Um, there's different categories of appliances, right? There's smart appliances and there's not smart appliances. Um, the biggest challenge is that uh, a lot of appliances nowadays, modern appliances are touchscreen, like an alarming amount have no tactile buttons and no tactile knobs at all. So I knew that smart appliances would be a really great option. To be honest, disabled people, especially blind people, but people of all different kinds of disabilities, we are like the ideal dream candidate for like a smart home. There's so many ways. For able-bodied people, sure, smart homes and smart appliances, they, they're convenient. But for people with disabilities, they can actually genuinely be life-changing and empowering us to be more independent, be more capable. 
um, which is incredible. And so it's frustrating when smart options aren't made accessible to us, um, whether it be accessible to us due to crazy high price points with, you know, obviously a lot of disabled people, as I've spoken about in the past, struggling with employment issues, um, poverty, living on government assistance, which is a whole other issue in and of itself, because that is not adequate living expenses or like funds or inaccessible being that it doesn't work with the other accessible technologies that we use like screen readers. So it's just, it's, it's a super frustrating space and it's a space that is moving so quickly. Smart homes, it is changing and moving and growing so fast. It's something that didn't exist 10 years ago, uh, even like eight years ago, you know? It's still very new and it's very quickly evolving. And also that includes appliances, the appliance industry in general, aside from smart appliances, just appliances in general, they're changing and it's an industry that is moving so fast. And so the first step that I took was going into appliance stores. I went to two or three, two different appliance stores on three separate occasions. And frankly, not surprisingly, none of them knew anything about accessibility. Sure, they knew if it worked with Alexa, but they didn't know if the smart app itself was accessible with a screen reader, which again, is not surprising. A lot of people don't know that, you know, accessible tech exists, period, let alone knowing if it is compatible. Um, and so I knew that that's a dead end. They're gonna be able to assist me with picking appliances, but I was going to need to know if those appliances were going to actually meet my needs in terms of accessibility. The second thing I did was search the internet. I scoured and I found very little information and a lot of the information that I did found was very outdated. Um, you know, information from 2017, which again, very fast moving industry. So by 2022, a lot of those models mentioned didn't exist anymore. And so I found searching the internet to be another dead end. Number three step that I took was turning to all of you. I felt like I was, you know, hitting dead ends. And so I came to everybody on TikTok and Instagram and Twitter and asked you guys um, for information. And I will definitely share some of what you guys provided um, later on in this video. So thank you. To anybody who in any small way tried to help me, thank you, I really appreciate it. And the final step that I took was contacting organizations like the CNIB that work with blind people. And honestly, once again, they knew very little because like I've kept saying, it's a really new industry, it's a really new space. And so um, they were really helpful or they tried to be very helpful and wanted to be very involved. But to be honest, for the most part, they knew very little and it's something that a lot of these organizations are just starting to try to delve into and just trying to dip their toes into the water and learn about themselves. So to be honest, uh, I feel like I was able to actually provide them as much information, if not more, than they were even able to provide me um, just because I had an urgent need to figure this out. Um, and so I wasn't willing to like stop or sit around. I just had to keep pushing through to figure out my options. Okay, so let's talk about the concerns I had and some of the things I had to take into consideration. So um, my top concern with smart appliances was the fact that a lot of the reviews say they're unreliable, um, whether it be the Alexa capabilities or just the smart app connectivity in general. Um, a lot of these apps have very poor reviews on the app store. Um, and a lot of people say they're unreliable. Half the time it doesn't work, half the time it disconnects, half the time Alexa doesn't do it. Um, and for, again, an able-bodied person, that's an inconvenience, it's annoying, but you can get up and you can go push the button yourself. As a blind person with it being fully touchscreen and no tactile buttons, that um, isn't an option for me. If the smart app disconnects, if Alexa says, I'm not here to work today, then I'm screwed. Um, so that was something that I had to consider. The second concern that I had in thinking about smart home appliances is can somebody hack it? I will link some articles about this. I had all of my friends and family researching and my dad um, kind of flagged this one for me, um, a concern about hacking. And uh, appliances can, smart appliances have and can be hacked. And that is a concern because a lot of like data and information is linked to those. Um, and on top of that, there are just annoying things that these hackers will do, like turn your fridge off so all your food rots, 
or if you have a smart lock, lock your front door and change the lock key. Um, and so things like that were something that I had to consider, um, something that we plan to do because I am incorporating a lot of smart devices throughout my home, both appliances and otherwise. Um, something we plan to do, which I would recommend, is creating like, I'm not, I'm not good at, I'm not tech savvy with this kind of lingo, so I'm sorry if I'm explaining this wrong, but like basically create a secondary, like a different email address that hosts all of my smart connectivity. Um, so any, if somebody did hack, the data that they would have access to is not like my actual important personal information. But if anybody else who is more tech savvy with hacking and smart appliances and smart homes, um, comment any suggestions below for this issue. Um, and then of course, like I mentioned, another thing I had to be concerned about is um, not only are is the app like not really reliable, but is it just accessible period to me as a screen reader user, um, whether I'm using talkback or voiceover, I wanted to make sure that this is going to be something that I can reliably do everything on, on my own. Um, not are some of the features accessible and others not, but are all of them accessible? Will I have the full capabilities that an able-bodied person would have with this device? And this truly isn't a concern for just me. This is a concern for all blind people. We're doing away with knobs and buttons and a lot of companies are moving towards the touch screen. So it's, it's just a, an ongoing concern for sure. And this doesn't just apply to appliances, this applies to just the world in general. A lot of things are moving towards touch screens. Um, I remember years back when a lot of stores switched to touch screen like debit card readers and I was just so frustrated because now it's like I can't do it on my own. Like I, I can't pay on my own because I can't like hit my pin code for my credit card and stuff like that um, or to add a tip and stuff like that. And so, yeah, it's it, this is a frustration. This whole touch screen movement is a frustration, not just in the appliance space uh, or not just a concern within the appliance space, but just in general with the world. And that's why I ask that you share this with people in, in the world of tech too, because we need to remind people that disabled people, blind people, we exist, we are a valuable market, we have spending dollars, and you need to think about us when implementing the design, because as I always say, technology has the power to bridge the gap or widen it for disabled people. And please, I ask that you choose to be a part of bridging the gap and making the choice to think about accessibility um, when you're designing. And for those who need this information, I hope it's helped. Again, I'm truly no expert in accessible design. I'm just a person who has a disability and is making a home to be accessible to meet my specific needs as a blind woman um, and raise a little bit of awareness um, and maybe give other people a few ideas. So I love hearing from all of you, um, your experiences, what you would do to make your home accessible to meet your needs. Thank you all for sticking with me and thank you HelloFresh for sponsoring this video. Once again, use code MollyGark16 for 16 free meals and three free gifts. I promise you will not regret it. And stay tuned for more condo updates. Um, follow me over on TikTok, Instagram, all the places for day-to-day -day life updates. I'm, I'm really excited for my new home. I'm really excited for my new kitchen and the things that I feel like this will empower me to be able to do. Um, and thanks for being on this journey with me. All right, till next time, you can click here to see my birthday vlog or here to see my post breakup makeover. Ooh, fun. Coming soon in part two. It worked. <laughs> Just all the technology, it just needs to get through it. <laughs> it's amazing. Oh, when you get to like do something on your own for the first time, you know.